Okay, next, it's been a landmark in Croydon for the last 50 years, but now Fairfield Hall is under the threat from closure. Now, the venue is used for music and theatre events as well as graduation ceremonies, and a local council says it wants to close it for two years for refurbishments, but locals fear that if it does close, it may struggle to reopen. Yeah, it's built for the community, for community use as well as for theatre use. So it's, it's an important part of the town. I mean, it is, I believe it's the heart of the town. And when you start taking theatres and venues away from towns, you, you start losing a lot of uh, the art and culture for, for the community. I'm basically trying to represent the people that use the halls in the community, uh, the many groups, the schools, the thousands of children that use the venue um, through the year, the Whitgift School, uh, the Croydon Symphony Orchestra, there's so much culture and arts coming out of this place, to close it down would be a crime to the town. Um, I've started a petition, we've got 6,250 at the last count, uh, we picked up a lot more uh, signatures today after today's event and um, we are basically trying to get a debate going with the council where we can deliver that position and debate it in a, in a council meeting. And another person joining against the fight against the closure of Fairfield Halls is Helen Hampton, director of Pop Choir, and she joins me now. Helen, thank you very much for coming in uh -oh. to speak to us. Now, you did attend the protest yesterday, the musical protest. Yes, we did. So tell us why you're involved with this. Uh, well, as a, as a group that uses the Fairfield Halls, you know, we are hires the Fairfield Halls, we feel incredibly passionately that, that we should keep this, uh, this venue open. Um, it's a hugely important venue. It's the largest one of its kind in the south of um, London and you know certainly in the south area uh, it attracts um, I mean eleven and a half thousand school children use it every year quite apart from higher groups like us it's got a full-size concert stage so for a group like us where we put sort of 350 people on stage at a time it's really the only affordable venue there is and there's so much other going on there apart from just you know, what people might view the, the, the Fairfield Halls, they might think, well, they may do a few classical concerts and not much else. But in fact, it's a, it is the hub of the community. Um, so we feel really passionately that this shouldn't be allowed to shut. Because I think like any business, if you were to close a business down for two years, uh, and that's the minimum, I mean, w you know, I, I, I don't think it will be two years. I think it'll be more like four or five. Um, people will inevitably, you'll lose your audience, you'll lose the, the artists that are coming, and they'll have to find somewhere else to go. And and it takes years and years and far more money to get the audience and your client base back. But the council says it's investing £30 million pounds to refurbish it and it says that closing it for two years will mean that the refurbishment will be done quicker and it will be uh, you know, less expensive to, to do this. So what, what do you well, say I to think, that? Well, I think we, we really welcome the refurbishment. There's no question about it. The Fairfield Halls is a wonderful venue, but it is tired and it needs refurbishment. And obviously Croydon have some bold plans. Um, they, they want to mimic the, the South Bank, which is which is fantastically commendable, but in order to do this, shutting the Fairfield Halls is not the best option. The actual cost of reopening once it's closed would be far in excess of of doing the phased refurbishment, which is what we want to see happen. Um, you know, we welcome the refurbishment, but we want to keep the venue open for the whole time because. Let's face it if, it, if it's shut for two years, that's something like 25,000 school children who won't get the opportunity to, to, to perform on the stage, graduations that can't take place. I mean, they do dog training there. The, the, the halls have other places. There's the theatre, um, the Ashcroft Theatre, the Arnhem Gallery, where they now have rock music. They've installed a brand new cinema screen recently so they can do cinema screenings. It is a whole community place, and they, they do wonderful works with disadvantaged children, uh, children in, in danger of becoming um, caught up in gang culture and violence, you know, through their terriers scheme. Uh, they work with people with dementia through the turtle song. So there's huge things that will be lost. And where will those, where will those things go? And they will find somewhere else to go 
I, I hope, but then you have to try to encourage them back. And as it's been proven in places like Birmingham, where they've had similar venues that have, had, have shut for refurbishment, it took seven years to get their audience back. And, you know, you, the loss to the business in the community, not having these thousands of people coming in, not having people coming into the panto, not having all the revenue that, that people shopping, eating in the area, and just the draw of having this incredible venue as the heart of Croydon. You know, if it's gone, what is there to bring us there now? And at the minute, Croydon Town Centre is running down because everyone's expecting Westfield. And even that's now been put back to 2020. So you've got a petition then. So tell us about um, the number of people who've signed the petition. Well, it's, it's well over 7,000 now. And... Uh, I mean, I think as more people know about it, hopefully more people will sign it. And, and would you? We oh, just, sorry, <laughs> we just want our voices to be heard. You know, I, I, the council seem to be um, in a position where they want to make this decision, regardless. Of, of the facts that are being presented to them and we are asking them and appealing to them um, to, to sort of take another look and see the, the huge loss and impact it would have on Croydon as, as, as Croydon the brand, never mind Croydon the community, if this venue shuts. And we do fear that if the hoardings go up, it will not reopen again. And as we heard there from the of reports that we saw before our conversation you're hoping that the council will meet up with you to discuss things further with we, you we really are yeah. we really are because we think it's it's critical that we keep this venue open for everybody and for the sake of all business uh, as well as um, schools and individuals in the community